Hey guys, we are in the middle of filming the Mini Everlasting uh, printable mini album template. We're doing the pages and I keep promising that I'm going to show you guys how I come up with this color that I've been using to, um, like I dyed that seam binding right there and I dyed that uh, trim, that pretty, um, and that seam binding and then there's a doily, right? So I wanted to show you guys um, exactly what combination I'm using to get this color and then we'll do a little play in with um, different card stocks and things um, just to see what it's gonna look like okay so first I'm gonna get uh, this is just a heat resistant matte this one happens to be a white color and it's a little stained so try not to pay too much attention to that <laughs> um, so this is the spray that I come up with okay it is this is just a cheapy a spray bottle that I got at Hobby Lobby um, it's got a pretty good spray on it so you'll need a you'll need a bottle and you will need some water and these are the two distress ink reinkers that I use to come up with this color so these are from Tim Holtz and ouch, I just knocked my knee <laughs> and um this one is bundled sage and this one is broken china so the, these two these are the reinkers these are just the regular distress ink um, so these two mixed together make the absolute perfect color for the uh, time for tea paper collection it matches this beautiful tealy blue greeny color right here so um this is what i use so i used equal parts of these two to make this color okay so what I did was I squirted a dropper full or maybe two dropper fulls in this bottle of each color and then I filled it up with water not up but you know I put a few inches of water in here and then just kind of mixed it up and then I sprayed a label um, and wrote on it uh, what I used <laughs> just so that I knew exactly what it was so anyways so I thought what I would do is what do we want to do first? First, I know what I'll do. I've got a pile. Whoa. Um, I've got a regular doily and then I got a die cut doily that I die cut out of 110 pound cardstock. And I got a few shipping tags because I'm thinking about using shipping tags uh, as inserts in the mini album. And then I've got all these pieces that are left over from the pages. So here's some labels and there's some banners and some bows, which we haven't used yet. Well, we used one in the first page. Um, some inserts or yeah, inserts. And then these are side pocket inserts. So what I thought I would do is I printed off for the side pocket inserts. I printed off the mats for those in the Harley script. So what I thought I would do um, is cut them out. Maybe not this page because it's got a lot on there. So maybe we'll do it this way. I will cut this one out and then I will leave this one whole and we'll do it two different ways. So I'm going to put these three things aside here, but I am going to spray these directly. So you'll see what I'm talking about. So first I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to cut it out and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I got this cut out, but I thought what I would do first is show you the difference when you ink it first and then spray and when you just spray it. So I thought I would use the scrap here and I think what I'm going to do is like I'm going to take like I would normally ink um, the page for the mini album that we're doing right now, right? So do that and then I'm going to soften it up a little bit, spread it out, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray this whole thing and I'm going to show you the difference between when you ink it ahead of time and when you don't. Okay, so let me scoot that out of the way. I'm going to give it a little shake. Because it, it does actually make a difference, believe it or not. And if you wanted to, you could have pre-wet that, but I... I didn't for time's sake let's just go with the flow here so I'm gonna be using this embossing heat tool by Marvy um, May May sent this to me and I'm gonna give it a whirl I have it hanging there it's meant for embossing but I bet it would work just fine for this so let's see how it does forgive the noise
I'm gonna grab a paper towel here. Okay, so I'm just gonna blot this excess spots off and wipe my mat up. Probably could have used that though. So I wanted you to see what happens when the, well, if I get it to straighten out. This is just the regular 110 pound cardstock. I wanted you to see what happens when you ink it first and then spray it with the spray. It gives it a slightly more variation in color. Like it's not just that blue green color that, is it gonna focus? Can you see what I'm talking about? There's a little bit more of a greener shade involved in there as well. So it kind of like gets this muddled look, which I really like. I really like the way that looks. So let me make sure this is good and dry on this end before I ink anything. Okay, so then you can always go back once it's dry if you didn't want to ink it first. You know, you can always go back once it's dry and, oh, let's do it the way we've been doing it. And add the ink afterwards. Okay, so let me show you. I'm gonna, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tear it apart so that way you can really see the difference up close. And you're probably gonna be like, really, there's really not that much difference, Jennifer. But there really is. Can you tell the two different, the differences between the two? This one has a lot more of that um, like mossy green color involved, where this one um, is just a little bit more of the tealy blue green color. Can you see? You probably can't tell that well. I can't see it in the monitor that well, so. But there is a slight difference in the way it turns out. So you need to kind of experiment if you're gonna do it the exact way that I'm doing it. If you're gonna be using these two re-inkers um, to make it. Now, if you don't have, if you don't have the re-inkers, you can make, um, you can take your pad, the, if you have those two colors, ink pads, you can take your pad and, and smoosh it onto your, um, your craft mat and spray it with water and mix it together and it'll do the exact same thing, okay? I just happen to have the re-inkers um, and it's a lot faster to have the spray, if you ask me. So, okay, I wanted to show you that really quick. So what I'm gonna do with this one, so we're gonna have these two. These two, uh, this is a side pocket insert mat and this is a side pocket insert mat. So um, this is, um, if you've been watching my videos, you know this is Distress Oxide. Um, in vintage photo. So we've been just taking the, what's this called? The ink pad directly to the paper. Right? And then we've been smooshing it in around. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do both of these at the same time. I'm going to spray this whole sheet with my spray and then I'm going to spray this one with my spray as well. So let's just go, let's just do it. You can even do the whole thing if you want some scraps of that blue color, blue green color. So there's that one and then I'm going to spray this one over here. Now I have an, a laser printer, so um, my ink does not, um, nothing happens to the ink when I get it wet is what I'm trying to say. It depends on your printer, so that's something else you're gonna have to experiment with. And by the way, I will link May May's uh, website below um, if you're interested in checking out this heat gun. It's pretty cool. So I'm gonna dry it now. Okay, so I've got them mostly dry. Let me wipe this up. First of all, I want you to see the difference between the two. Um, hopefully you can see this one a little bit better, right? So look how cool that one turned out. It's so neat looking. So anyway, a lot of interest just in that alone, right? And I also pulled out, oops, don't wanna get ink on it. I also pulled out the uh, Time for Tea LDRS paper. This is the color that I matched, which this, this is, I love this color. This has to be one of my new favorite colors. But I wanted you to see how close that is to the spray. 
see that is exactly what I was looking for. So I wanted you to see that uh, real quick. I should have pointed that out earlier, shouldn't I? Have? So where's my side pocket insert here? So then it would go onto the side pocket insert just like that. And of course the edges would be inked and whatnot, but isn't that pretty? So you don't have to have special paper. You don't have to buy anything else. If you've already got the re-inkers or if you got something similar, um, just print out the mats and spray it yourself. So isn't that pretty? So we're gonna have to do this for some of our mats. And the same with this one. Let me cut this out. So you can see the difference. I don't think it's that big of a difference. I mean, well, it is really because this one gives you a, a whole lot of different color variations, um, which I find very, very appealing. It's very, it, it just draws your eye, you know, it's just extra interest to the page. And it just adds to that vintage shabby chic look that we're going for, don't you think? Okay, I'm not even gonna ink this one. I'm just gonna grab it and show you what it looks like. Let's put it on, the, no, let's put it on this side. So it would look like that. So cool, right? I see, I think, I think that the color is just beautiful and especially if you use one of the background designs when you print off the mats, um, just beautiful. I just think it looks fantastic. Okay, so we're gonna set these aside for the moment. And then let's spray, let's do some experimenting with these because first thing I wanna do is, whoa, for two of these, I'm gonna add some ink just right on top. And then for two of them, I'm gonna leave them be. And I'm also gonna leave these be, I believe, right? So I'm just gonna lay these, not on that crease, cause it makes it do something funny. So I'm just gonna spray them. So you can do one, two, three coats, whatever you wanna do. You can spray it as many times. Oh, now you can really see the difference on this one. Let me see if I can zoom in. Okay, hang on. Can you see the difference between the one that I added ink and the one that doesn't have ink? Um, this one's just more of that greeny, mossy greeny color, right? So both of these colors are actually in the collection. Let me find, let me find that other one. Such beautiful paper. Okay, here we go. So there's the other one, right? So doesn't that look fantastic? Okay, so, so like I said way back in the beginning, a lot of these papers are pink. There's a lot of pink in this beautiful paper line. And... You know, I wanted to add some more color to it. So I'm gonna zoom you back out and then we're gonna dry these. Let's move these out of the way and let's try to soak up some of this ink on this scrap piece of paper. Just cause I wanna see if it's gonna, whoa. Distress ink will always reactivate when it gets wet. So let's just see what kind of coolness that comes up with. All right, I'm gonna finish drying these and then I will be back. Okay, so I've got these all dry and they just look so cool. They just look so neat. So these are gonna be great little labels when I go to start embellishing everything. These are gonna be great little labels to maybe stamp on, um, all kinds of fun stuff just to put in random spots, maybe even a tab, we can use them as a tab. Um, the same with these, these little banner flags. So cute, it's just like a little accent. And then this one, all of these little bows, I've already made a stick pin bow, right? So isn't that cute? So it just slides in there. But this one I inked 
um, after after I cut them out. So I just if you don't want to mat your bows, isn't this cute? So that's this. Which which size is this? I think it's this size right here. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's this um, that one. But right, isn't that cute? So then you can just stick it in different places in your mini album, where wherever you want to add a little something something, where you don't have to glue the whole thing. You know, you don't have to glue the bow down. You can just stick it in there. Um, and it's just a cute little accent. Isn't that adorable? So I'm excited to do that. And I've got another video I'm going to make showing you how I make all the stick pins that I'm planning on. Different types of stick pins. I don't plan on using that many stick pins. But <laughs> anyway, they're just cute. So there's that. Oh, and there's that one where I added, you know, where I scraped up the, the extra bits. So that's kind of cool. All right, so let me put those aside. And let's do the doilies. So one's, you know, a real doily, and then this one's cut out of cardstock. So where's the page where I use that at? Is that the back side of this? It is. So this one, um, I'm almost positive I inked it slightly before I sprayed it. I might not have. Well, let's try, let's try just going over just a little bit with, I'm not even going to re-ink the um, blending tool. I'm just going to, just a little. Right. So just a little bit. And then for this one, oh, I'm going to hit the edges with the ink pad itself. And then spread that out a little bit. And so before I spray these, I wanted to do a few little things on the shipping tags. So the first thing I'm going to do, first I'm going to take it directly to the tag here. And then I'm going to smoosh it out. Just smear it. And I'm going to go a little bit heavier on the top here, just because just because I want to. And then for this one, I'm just going to go and add a little ink around the edges. I'm just going to see what kind of different variety we can get here. And I need to wipe that up before I spray because that'll add more color here. So let's put the two doilies here and let's put the two tags here. Let's do it like that. Okay. Oops. I thought the lid was on there. It wasn't on there. So let me move my ink pad out of the way. So let's spray the tag of the doilies. I can already tell that the real doily has taken the spray a little bit different. Right? So cute. Let me get this one some more. All right. Now I'm going to dry these again. And I do think that they do look different when you let them dry on their own. I think that it does have a different uh, feel. Or not a feel, but it's just a different look to it. But who's got time to wait on something like that, right? So I'm going to get these dried up and then I will be back. Okay, so with this one, with the real doily, I did end up uh, turning it over and smearing it all over the spray droplets that are uh, left over on the mat, just to give it a little more color because it wasn't taking the color as much as I wanted it to. And then once I got to thinking about it, I realized that's what I had done. So, so there, isn't that pretty? That's the real doily. And then here is the cardstock doily. This one's still just a little damp. There's the cardstock doily. So there's the difference there. See, it's the spray, the, the material takes things differently, you know, the, the material that you're using. Oh, and this one's still a little wet. Okay, so they're not done drying. Let me finish drying because I want to show you all something else with this, something cool. So let me finish drying them all the way. Okay, so these two are kind of cool looking just the way they are. They've got a lot of interest um, and it just looks really cool, right? So I'm gonna leave these two be. So I'm gonna set those aside. But these two, um, the cardstock, it just, everything just looks really smooth, doesn't it? 
and it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of color variation in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys, you've probably already seen this, where you just take clean water straight out of, um, you can spray it in your hand. Actually, I should have sprayed it in the other hand. <laughs> and just throw droplets onto it. Let me do it the other hand. Or you can spray directly onto it, right? So you take just clean water and then you give it a second to activate. This isn't completely clean, but it should be good enough. So just give it a second. And then you should just be able to paper towel the water droplets off of there. And it should give you a really cool, like splatter effect. So it kind of removes the color. Do you see that? Do you see that there? And then this one, so let's go ahead. Can you see it? I think you can. Let's go ahead and just spray directly onto it. Kind of like, not a full on spray, but like a, you know, just like a half spray, right? Ah, still kind of full on, but that's okay. Let's just get some more droplets on there just to give it some more interest. I'm letting it just activate the color. You could take your ink pad and smoosh it onto the thing, get it wet and then splatter, you know, um, some vintage photo onto the things as well to give it like a aged look onto the things, onto whatever you're creating. See, now look at that. Look at how cool those look now. Pretty cool. So if you don't get a very interesting, you know, spray the first time, then um, you can just add some water and reactivate it. Um, and then you can add some cool little effects, right? Okay, so those are cool. Let me wipe this up. Oh shoot, you guys, I just realized that one of my lights is not in place. Let me get it. Let's see if it makes a difference. I just started recording like, hey, let's do this. Can you hear me? Hello. Oh, watch out. Let's see, does that, does that make a difference, you guys? I don't know, I can't tell. I can't believe I didn't have my light on. Okay. Anyway, so let's move on to the uh, fabric stuff, okay? So let's start with, let's get some fabric first. Let's do some seam binding. This is Hug Snug. Uh, I will link all the products that I can find in the description box below. Um, and let's do some trim. And let's do some of my vintage trim that I've been using in this. And then let's do some cheesecloth. Is that all the fabric that I got? I think so. So what we're gonna do is let's just take, uh, when you're doing seam binding, I have a whole video on how I uh, color and crinkle and store my seam binding. I'll try to link that below, but you wanna try to do good quality amount, of, a good quality, a good quantity of seam binding at one time. Um, but again, hug snug. I think the best place to get it right now, I think is zipper stop or ribbon something, it's on Etsy. I'll find it hopefully and link it. Okay, I don't think this one will change colors, but I wanna see how this trim, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna do a good section. I'm gonna see how each one of them takes the color. This is just trim that I got at Hobby Lobby, I believe. They're both the same, one's just cream and one's white. They don't come on this thing. I put them on there myself. And then cut that piece off. So let's just see what the difference is on how it takes the color. Whoops. I'm trying to, okay. And then let's get a little bit of this. Wasn't that pretty? Oh my gosh. Whoa. When we did, um, well this is, When we did the last page, when we colored it, it was so pretty. This one turned out so beautiful, I thought, anyways. And then let's get some of this. This one is not cotton. I think this one might be a polyester -y type. I'm not sure, but let's see how it takes it. Takes the spray.
And let me move these two out of the way. And then I'm just going to cut some cheesecloth. There's what I'm going to do both white and unbleached just so we can see the difference. Alrighty. So let's start with the seam binding. Um, yeah, let's start with the seam binding. Now, when I did my seam binding, whoa, all kinds of stuff's coming out. <laughs> I was playing with a lot of stuff. Look, there's another one of the um, die cuts that I sprayed. Isn't that pretty? Okay. Um, when I did my seam binding, it was very light-handed, um, and I left it sit overnight to dry on its own, and it got this really cool um, different colors. And I also, with when I did this one, is I took my ink pad, and not my ink pad, I took it my ink blending tool, and I kind of got it a little dirty looking, I guess. So, I actually, I think I'm going to do that now. I think I'm going to do that again. Because... Um, I really like the variation, and that what I showed you just a second ago was all I have left, and I might need some more. So it's up to you how heavy-handed you go here. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do. And then with seam binding, I like to get it wet with just water first. It just seems to take the ink so much better, and since this is just distress ink, um, it's not as pigmented as like uh, India ink, so you can already tell that it's changed it from white to like a, you know, like a vintage linen look. Okay, so we got that. Now let's add the spray. And if you didn't want to make a spray, you could just use, and you have the reinkers, you could just make a puddle in the middle of your craft mat, no big deal, and of, you know, of the reinkers and water. And you can just dip this in there. Okay. I'm gonna have to make some more, goodness. <laughs> Come on, there we go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep motion it around like that right and I'm going to just kind of squish it into a ball okay so since we've got this pile I'm gonna set this aside for a second I wish I had enough time just to let it dry on its own because it really was pretty I'm gonna get some of that <laughs> yep now I'm getting look it's getting under my nails and everything Ew. okay so let's just go ahead and add these trims in here because they really, you know, I don't really, I don't think I added, um, is that the front or the back? I don't think I added water to them. I think I just sprayed them. So I'm just going to go ahead and just directly spray these. I maybe could have for that one because that one seems like it would need it. Ooh. Which spraying hands here, right? So the same with this, you can moosh them around. Is moosh a word? I'm not even sure moosh is a word. So there's those. Let me set these aside. I just love that trim. Okay, and looks like this one didn't hardly take any color, did it? But that's okay. And then let's get the cheesecloth in here. Let's just bring them in the pile. I think I will get these a little wet. I probably shouldn't have got such big pieces, but that's okay. So we're gonna spray this one. Woo! It's my wrist. That's when it starts hurting when I spray a lot. I was a nail tech for 18 years and it it really did a number on my back and it did a number on 
my wrist. Okay, so same thing. Let's moosh it up. Make a ball. Let's moosh. Let's pick up some color. Let's moosh. Is moosh a word? Y'all gonna have to let me know. Let me know. cream one isn't picking up the color as well as the white one, I bet, but that's okay. It doesn't have to. Whoa! <laughs> Did you see that squirt? Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my heat gun to them and try to get them dried a little bit. I might squeeze some of that out because that will never dry. Okay, I need to change my battery. So before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and wipe the excess moisture off of my, my, my uh, craft mat here. And then I will be back after I change my battery. I promise it won't take but a minute. So you're not missing anything. These won't be dry. Battery is changed. So you can already tell the difference in the cream and the white on that trim. Okay, whoa. I'm going to separate this stuff back out and then I'm going to start drying it. Okay, you guys, that is as dry as they're going to get right now <laughs> because I like to leave these sit out overnight. This one's mostly dry, but these are still a little damp, the cheesecloth, um, but you can still see the color that it come up with. Um, it will lighten just slightly, but uh, it's beautiful, right? So here are the beautiful, beautiful trims, right? Look, this one even looks different on the back side just a little bit. You see how it's like, look at my fingers. You see how it's kind of like a little darker on the back side? So this is the one we used in the page just the other day. And then look at these, the cream and the white. They are so beautiful. Look at those colors. They're absolutely beautiful. So the same spray, just different colors, like a white and a cream make two different color but the same, if that makes sense. I know I'm making sense. Tell me I'm making sense, right? So, <laughs> so those are absolutely beautiful. So it's just that simple. So that spray can do all, all of this fun stuff, all of it. So pretty, right? Where's the other one? So you can match whatever paper collection you are using at the time by using your distress inks and you can use your ink pads you could use um, any ink pad that's water-based probably to do the same thing but i like distress inks because they kind of move around a little bit so if you have any distress inks in any form whether it be the dauber the distress stain the ink uh, re-inker the ink pad any of it you can do this exact same technique um it would just take longer if you don't have a spray in my opinion but but they all work the same so so anyway, you know, I had another, I had one more thought. So I think I'm going to try it. And if it sucks, then I'll cut it out. <laughs> but I have a thought. I found these um, Kaiser Craft. Look at that box all funky. Whoa. 
these Hazard Craft wooden flourish pack is what it says, but, and then it says tea party. I'll bring that close to you so you can see it if you like. I'll link it below if I can. I thought about maybe using some of these pieces in the embellishment part. So I'm gonna see if I can um, change the color. Like it says forever friends, there's teapots and oh, just so cute. So I'm hoping I've got this one and I've got this one. This one's called Secret Garden. So I've got these two. Um, I think it would be fun if I could spray them if I wanted to. I know that I could paint this with gesso and then spray it and it will work, but I wonder what it looks like if I just spray it with this. And let's just see. Let's just see what happens. All right, I sprayed it pretty good and it looked like it took a little color. Wow, that dried really fast. Okay, let me get one of the other ones, the original. Well, I should have got two out to begin with. So there's what it looks like originally. Ah! There's what it looks like originally, right? So there's what it looks like with one squirt of spray or one layer. Let's just dip it into here and see what happens. See if it picks up any more. Piece of wood there. Yeah, I picked up a little bit, maybe not a whole, whole lot. So there's the original and there's the sprayed version. So let's see how it looks with the paper line. Because I'm just really curious if it's gonna work. All right, so there's the color we were trying to match. I'm not gonna sit it on there because I don't know. Ooh, not too bad. And then there's the green. Oh, look, it looks like it matches that green pretty good. Okay, so see if you just experiment um, with all of your different sprays and stuff, you could come up with the coolest color combinations to match whatever you're doing. So if I hadn't have thought to spray this piece of wood, I wouldn't have known that I could just spray the roll, the roll, you know, wooden embellishment and come up with that pretty color, see? And ignore the fingers, right? Right? So that's pretty, pretty cool. I like that. I'm glad I did that. Okay, so let me know if this was helpful for you guys. Uh, leave me a comment below and tell me what you think and if you've tried any color combinations and I just love it. I mean, I just love it. This is, this is like my new favorite color. I don't know. I mean, I love my purple. Don't get me wrong. So anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see uh, also in the comments below. Um, don't forget to check the description box for all the different links that I have mentioned. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that little circle right there. And then um, check out these other videos that you see on the screen. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.